I am Leo. <laughs> and I'm Alma. Uh, welcome to the Underemployed and Hungry Show. Today we're going to be talking about the Jackalope Freedom Festival. Hopefully we'll be able to answer some of your questions that you might have about it. Yeah, we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of responses kind of asking about a few things about the festival, so we're going to explain everything. Uh, basically, Jackalope Festival uh, is going to be the biggest benefit for the underemployed in Hungary in existence. <laughs> So we'll just start off by giving you a few um, basic details about it. It is August 1st through 3rd, um, so in a couple weeks, or I guess just less than a few weeks. It is near Forest Lakes, Arizona. So it's in between um, Forest Lakes and Heber Overgard. So about 40 miles east of Payson. If you're coming from the valley and you go up through Payson, you'll drive another like 40 miles east before um, you get there. And it's off of a Black Canyon Lake exit. And you drive about seven and a half miles in. Um, keep veering to the left, past the status campground. Um, and you'll come up to Black Canyon Lake and you continue on even further than that. Um, not much further than that, but you do eventually find Baca Meadows, which is where the festival happens each year. It's kind of the hub where people set up a uh, market and, um, you know, wherever they want to camp. Uh, yeah, it's good to remember though, it is a forest service road, so it, it's dirt. Um, it's not that well marked, but there is definitely a sign, and we'll put some of our own signs up as well. Um, also, uh, there will be some stuff on the webpage about that as well. Well, there's another entrance if you're coming in from Heber Overgarden, you're driving an RV or pulling a trailer or anything like that. The we we haven't I haven't driven this route myself personally, but I've been told um, from other RVers that it is way uh, more mellow of a drive, less steep. It's less steep. It's less hills. If you come in through the Black Canyon Lake exit, uh, you know you go over a little mountain. It is kind of steep and just to avoid any difficulties, if you have a big vehicle, you might want to come in from the Heber Overguard. And I have created a Google map that is um, listed on the website, so you can go and check that out. There's also coordinates and, and everything on there um, showing you. You can just you know program it into your GPS or your phone or whatever and know exactly where you need to go. Uh, yeah, and we had a few questions about... Um you know, isn't it going to be hot? Well, this is up in the mountains that are right around 7,500 feet in elevation. So it'll probably be around 75, 80 degrees max. But in the mountains, there's really not much humidity at all. So it's going to be really nice and cool. Um, down here in Phoenix, it's like going to be 110. So it's a real big difference. Yeah, if you're flying into Phoenix and you get here and you think for a minute, this, it, this is how hot it's going to be camping, it's not. Uh, we go up to this area of Arizona to get away from the heat and to, um, you know, just relax and enjoy. It does rain sometimes up um, in Forest Lakes, so it is a good idea to bring, um, I don't know, a trash bag or some kind of poncho or something like that, and if you do have a pop-up and it's easy to bring it, bring it. Um, the more places there are to hang out underneath, if it does rain, the better. Because uh, not everybody has something like that. There is um, an individual who brings a pretty big one, and we put it by where the audio equipment is set up, and that way people are able to listen to music or speakers or whatever event is going on um, at the microphone um, and be protected from the weather if there is any. But it, if it does rain, it usually dries up within a few minutes, and then the sun comes out, and it's really nice again. Yeah, I mean, it is up in the cool pines, so there's plenty of places to uh, tie things up on, too, and... Uh lots of shade from the, the sun out there. Um, let's see. Anyway, let's make a, we did put a camping uh, list together and materials that might be useful and we'll, uh, that's going to be on the website as well. The camping list is already on the Facebook group so if you find, um, I think it's Jack Fest, Jackalope Freedom Festival group on Facebook, you can find the camping list I created there. So if you're wondering what you need to bring with you, and you're worried about not having something, that list is pretty thorough. I took three different camping lists and combined them all together based off of what, um, you know, I thought the, a jackalope would need while camping. Yeah, so anyone that's coming, uh, 
to justify the trip, I would promote everybody to try to sell or trade something uh, because there is no permission asked, you're free. And it's a truly free market. The motto is, where spontaneous order happens naturally without any force, coercion, or aggression. So, I guess if you are in some kind of situation with law enforcement while you're there, if they ask you questions, which maybe they will, maybe they won't, uh, maybe they'll let you know who they are, maybe they won't, but if you do know and you are aware, I would definitely film every interaction you have with them. As in with all police interactions. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, there are other things to do out on there too. Um, there's a, a lake really close by, so you can do some fishing. Um, a lot of people bring ATVs and dirt bikes and they ride those around and there's hundreds of miles of wilderness in the area. Um, there's uh, one lady I know is going to be doing uh, a nature walk, a little educational about you know, native plants and things like that you can eat for survival and medicinal purposes. And um, yeah, there, there's a guy that's probably going to be taking some people shooting and teaching them about gun safety and stuff. So there really is a lot of stuff going on. There the won't be any gaps in time if you want to stay busy. Well, and just the fact that you can sit around and enjoy a campfire and relax with like-minded people is, you know, that's just uh, enough in itself. Um, there is a jackalope hunt for the kids, so we hide a jackalope, and whoever finds the jackalope actually wins a real rabbit that Leo produces. Yeah. So you can either keep it as a pet, or you can eat it, whatever you like. <laughs> yeah, some of, the, some of the things you can do though when you set up a, a booth or uh, your little camping area, uh, you know, you can sell some food, you can trade clothes, I mean, there's, there's people bringing up a bunch of clothes and they're going to do like a free cycle type thing with that. Um, I, I'm personally setting up the Magpac Homestead, uh, you know, they'll do little demonstrations about raising quail and rabbits for home meat production. Uh, and then I'll make a, a rabbit stew, maybe some roasted or fried quail for a meal one night. And Bacon wrapped? Maybe, maybe bacon wrapped. Uh, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that yet, but I will make something like that. What about the pig? We're, we're trying to find a pig to uh, roast there, but uh, we're having a hard time finding it. If a free you, range organic pig. If you know anyone who's got a pig for sale or in the market. Yeah, send us a message because we're having a little hard time on that. Um, let's see. Um, Last year, there were some people that had issues finding the location. Some people drive in when it's dark and they're not really sure where to go. And like I mentioned earlier, you can go on the website and look at the map. It's very specific. Um, but this year, if you're coming in through Black Canyon Lake, we will be putting up a sign every mile uh, just to let people know, keep going. Uh, you're not there yet, and you're not there until you see the Baca Meadow sign, and even once you see the Baca Meadow sign, you still have to drive like way into the meadow, and then you start seeing people. So, um, oh, well, Leo was saying that he cooks, he's going to make some rabbit stew and maybe some quail. Um, the first year of Jackalope, I made corn dogs and french fries and onion rings, and last year we did a deep fried um, chicken and uh, it was a chicken and a turkey, I think. And this year I have been, people have been asking me, please make corn dogs again, please make corn dogs. So I'm going to be making corn dogs again. And I have a big fryer and I'm actually uh, building a device so I can fry multiple corn dogs at one time. And I will be doing the corn dogs between a set time. Cause if you do cook while you're there, it's a little overwhelming. A lot of people, you know, will come and get food from you if you're cooking so that they don't have to. I mean, it's just how it goes. So definitely if you cook, have, you know, some time for yourself set so that you can go and visit the market or other people that are camping there and spend time with them. Yeah, that's the one benefit. So if you are flying in from out of town, uh, you don't have to bring all your camping and cooking equipment. I mean, a uh, sleeping bag, maybe a tent, maybe a couple tarps or ponchos and you're good because uh, you can't get everything there. Um, we will be doing um, some other things if you um, you're speaking that kind of stuff. Uh, if you are coming in, you want to speak and set up your own little thing. We'll have like a central area where people can speak, but you can do your own event at your own campsite. It's very unorganized, very spontaneous. I, I take the responsibility upon myself personally every year to make sure that there is some kind of PA system for speakers or educators or agorists or musicians to. Um, 
um, you know, be, use and take advantage of. Uh, I'm, I'm personally going to speak uh, about uh, quitting your slave job and being a full-time agorist. And there is ways to do that. It does take a lot of work. And uh, you have to do some, I do a lot of speaking engagements, teaching people about this. And people are really hungry for this information. So um, that's another thing that I'm going to be doing there. Not everyone shows up, you know, at the same time. Some people come early, some people stay late. And uh, so this year I'll be creating a document for a sign-up sheet, people to first come, first serve, sign their sign up whatever they want to speak about or if they want to, um, you know, play songs for a while or just tell someone about an event that they're hosting at their camping location that will all be available and uh, first come, first serve, very spontaneous order. I'll also have Agris Marketplace shirts and hopefully, if we can get it done, some Jackalope Freedom Festival shirts, which there's only one in existence and Josie wore it at uh, Pork Fest in support of Jackalope. So that was awesome. We sent her that shirt and I just wanted to thank her for wearing that. That was pretty cool. So a lot of people were able to see that and hear about it if they've never heard about it before. So maybe one of these days we'll get a bunch of people from the East Coast coming this way. Yeah, we got a, a few people that, that are coming that are well known. Um, you want to tell the list of some of the people that might be showing up? Um, the keynote campers. Sure. Keynote campers. And I mean, if, if you're a celebritarian and you weren't invited, <laughs> you weren't invited to the Jackalope Festival, you are invited. Everyone's invited. Um, there's no forms or registrations you have to fill out to come. So. Basically, what I've, I've um, to avoid the state and their ideas that they rule over us, uh, and instead of calling it speakers or showing on the website that there's a market that's organized of some kind, I created a keynote campers. And so you, you can be a keynote camper if you want to be a keynote camper. Sometimes I like to... I guess, um, kind of go at the ego of people and say, hey, would you like to be a keynote camper? And they're like, what's that? You know, and they get really excited about it. And uh, especially if they do a lot of educational videos or any kind of radio show, they, they, they get more interested in coming if you tell them, hey, you want to be a keynote camper? So we got some keynote campers coming. <laughs> uh, one of them is Michael Shanklin who just recently started the Voluntary Virtues Network, which our show airs on YouTube. And he will be there. I'm not sure exactly what he's going to speak about. If he's going to speak, uh, probably whatever he feels like doing while he's there. And then also Robert Kruger, who is a founding member of Voluntary Virtues. He's also a co-host of Vol Voluntary Virtues Roundtable, host of the Anarchist Experience, and he has a degree in communications and journalism. And he, before he became a voluntarist, he created several websites for government agencies in New Mexico. So he has a lot of experience and knowledge on you know, subjects of voluntarism and anarchism. So it'll be interesting to meet him and hear what he has to say. Uh, the Natural Rights Coalition will be driving up from Southern California. I've met them a few times at Libertopia and they're pretty cool people and they also have um, mentioned if there's anyone else looking to caravan up here from Southern California to contact them. Um, Steven Holman, he's part of that and he will also be um, providing free aid. So free aid is another alternative to, well, aid that costs money and he's going to be doing some I guess, uh, I didn't write this down, but he's going to be doing some first aid, uh, survival, uh, Sounds cool. thing. Uh, let's see, Derek Bros from the Conscious Resistance. As far as I know, he's still coming. He does a lot of stuff with the, the free thinkers, and, um, there's a big group in Arizona called the Phoenix Free Thinkers. If you're interested in that, you can check that out. Uh, Donna and Ernest Hancock will, of course, be joining us from Freedom's Phoenix and Ernie's show, Declare Your Independence. Barry Hess, he's running for governor of Arizona. If you don't know who Barry Hess is and you live in Arizona, you're not doing your research. So, <laughs> voters, 
Go check out Barry Hess if you're voting. Um, Josie Wales, we're not sure if she's going to come. She said she was going to come, but she just got a new job, so we're still waiting to hear back and see if she will confirm, confirm. So if you are a, a fan of Josie and you're coming to the festival, give her some encouragement. Uh, of course, Larkin Rose. Larkin Rose will be driving across the country to come visit us. He is the, I, I guess it's an art, or no, it is a book, I think it was a book, uh, The Most Dangerous Kendall Superstition. Park. If you haven't checked out The Most Dangerous Superstition by Larkin Rose, check it out. He's talking about the government, if you didn't figure that out. Uh, let's see, who else? Jesse Matthewson, this will be his second year there. He does the gun training, Liberty Tactical Training, and he taught a lot of people last year that had never shot guns before how to shoot. So if you're interested in that and learning, he's definitely the guy to talk to. He also has a website called Jesse Talks Back, so Google that and check it out. Oh, let's see. Bitcoin Not Bombs, Drew Phillips. I sent him an email today, so hopefully he'll get back to me and tell me that his travel plans are made and he's coming. Uh, let's see. Crystal and Sean Cochise. They are the ones who are going to be doing the uh, clothing donation free cycle this year. So if you want to bring clothes to get rid of them and maybe exchange them or trade or just give them away they're the ones you get you're gonna want to see and Tony Bones from Cop Block hopefully she's coming so far I've heard she is um, I haven't heard she's confirmed her travel plans but I'm hoping I will in the next couple weeks I think that's pretty much the list of course we'll be there and I don't know is there anyone else you know um, yeah I think that's that's pretty much anyone that's well known but there will be a lot of people there. What's great is you can actually sit and talk and sit around a campfire with a lot of these people and kind of pick their minds and uh, realize how real most people are. It's, it's really, really awesome. Yeah, this is the third year, so we don't really know, you know what the outcome will be, but um, jackalopes abide by the non-aggression principle, so if there is anyone who's not abiding by the non-aggression principle, they will be ousted from the market, naturally. You know, if you are going to be setting up a market, we do promote the idea of using alternative currencies like Bitcoin or silver, gold, barter between people. Uh, it's, it's just the whole concept of being free and being left alone. We can create our own free society, even if it is just for a weekend camping in the mountains of Arizona. If you plan on coming and you have a business or a service or something you would like to offer or provide and you want people to know ahead of time, I will um, take that information and get it updated on the website. That way uh, people can know if you have a specific event you've already planned and you know what time you're going to do it, and you're going to do it at your camping location, uh, you can also let me know and I can advertise ahead of time if you have artwork. Even better, I will share it. Now you know another person is coming is uh, Patrick Harris from ByExample.com. He owns a, a self-sufficient farm up in the mountains uh, by Concho, Arizona, um, teaching people about self-sufficiency and living off the grid. I have two more people that I didn't mention yet. Um, handcrafted by Erica. She makes handcrafted soaps. She's here local, and they're awesome. So definitely visit her while you're at Jackalope. And Mark Stevens from the No State Project. A lot of people are familiar with his show on LRN. FM, so you can check that out if you're not. And uh, he's he's excited to be here, for sure. Yeah, these are the people that, that told us they're coming, or most likely coming, but there probably are some other more well-known people that are coming, and we just don't know about it. Um, let's see. There's... I don't know what's going on with Adam Kokesh, but he was on Voluntary Virtues a few months ago and did say if he is not in jail, he will be there. And so this is a video reminding him of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on with him though. I gotta, I gotta check in and see, see how he's going. Hopefully not in jail, because that would be horrible. Um, there is an individual who provides porta potty services, and if you would like to donate to porta potties, you can. I will insert the QR code here, and you can either pay in Bitcoin or you can pay with PayPal. If you choose to pay with PayPal, join the group on Facebook and you can get the information there for that individual's PayPal account and then you can donate and send your money. And uh, you can meet the guy there at the, the festival too and hand him some cash if you feel more comfortable with that. 
um, but we do prefer a little bit in advance because the, it, there is a free festival, but it does cost some money to get porta potties, and that's like the one one thing that we really would like to get. They're really nice to have, and we're probably going to be getting more this year than we did last year um, to take care of the influx of people. Yeah, definitely. there's going to be quite a bit of people there this year. And when I say we, I mean he, the individual getting the porta potties. Yeah, there is no we. <laughs> there's only spontaneous order from a group of individuals that you... just happen to be in the same place at the same time. Yep, exactly. Uh, another thing, uh, after the festival, uh, there will be Bitcoin excursions doing some uh, trips up to the By Example Farm, teaching people how to live off grid. And uh, that, that would be a thing that uh, we can mention there at the festival as well. Uh, you can ask Patrick Harris about that. He's in Concho. Hopefully he'll speak. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll get him to speak. How are you going to market your, your agorist uh, business at Jackalope? Like, what do, you, what do you have to advertise what you're doing there? And how are you kind of setting up your little market area? Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a booth. I'll bring some rabbit and quail so you can see physical examples of them. Uh, like I said, I'll do some cooking so you can uh, see what the uh, meat actually tastes like and that it's a, a concept of uh, small-scale livestock. And then, um, you know, you can just talk to me, ask me about anything you want, and I'll, I'll just teach you right there on the spot. Um, I do, like, offer some services, like obviously buying the cages that I make to make it easier for yourself, uh, buying the animals. I won't have a whole lot of animals with me. Obviously, it's a lot to take camping, but I will have some. Uh, hopefully I can sell them all so I don't have to bring them home. And then, um, that's, that's okay. More jackalope hunts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, um... Are, are you going to do a quail cage setup? Yeah, I'm going to show an example of a quail cage setup I do, which I believe I'm the only one in the world that has this design. Uh, so if someone else can find one that's like that, please send it to me because I think I'm the one that made this one up. Um, we just actually updated the... Magpock Homestead website with new photos of the new quail cage design too. Yeah, I um, was... Oh, the in video. Yeah, I was interviewed by uh, Marjorie Wildcraft and I got a ton of views on that video. At Prepper Fest. And dozens and dozens of people contact me wanting to buy the cages, but she showed uh, a WordPress website that I haven't updated in about a year and a half <laughs> with like old generations of the same cage design that didn't work out so well. So you can see uh, an example of the one that was in her interview that everyone was really raving about. And uh, like I said, if you want to contact me on that, just leave a comment or uh, check out Magpac Homestead uh, at gmail.com and I'll, I'll get back to you about that. Or, email, or, you. Or, you know, email you. Or you check it out on Facebook. Right, yeah, the, the page on Facebook has some updated pictures and things like that. I don't know if we've actually put the, ca the cages on the Facebook yet, but they are, now, the new design is now on the website, so. And if you watch Marjorie's video, just know that with the, the images she shares in there are the old design. And if you want to know what the new one looks like, to go see the website. Yeah, and then I do do the alternative currencies, Bitcoin um, and gold, silver, barter, just whatever's worth it to me. Um, that's the way free markets work. Another couple of things we were going to do at the, the festival was uh, uh, a D uh, registration table. Yeah, because everyone always wants to know, like, where do I register to set up there? Or, is there an organized spot? Um, Where do I go? Yeah. What do I do? <laughs> so to, to educate people about the philosophy of not asking permission and not being a slave. Right. Which is really a hard concept for a lot of people to get over. Uh, we're going to do some funny stuff like put some signs going like register here and have them leave them all over the camp or something like that. So <laughs> registration can... table with it, with just an arrow <laughs> sign, registration table with an arrow, and then just like, because if law enforcement shows up, you know, maybe they'll see the sign registration table and they'll think, oh, <laughs> that's where the person in charge is. Let's go find so them. So we, we could film all that happening where people are... Following the active... signs that maybe yeah. lead, lead to an unmanned table or whatever. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll make it where we can film it and... Uh, watch people as they try to register and we'll educate them about hey, we'll have, I'm maybe on the table registration like don't be a slave registering for uh, for sheep or something like that we'll, we'll make that up it'll be really funny maybe I'll put a sign that says um, special agent not in charge on break until forever yeah we'll, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna do some funny experiments too with people and just to kind of see how even people that understand freedom 
still have the concept of asking permission, even if it's from each other, instead of just voluntarily working together with people uh, in a spontaneous order fashion. Um, that, and if the police come and they want to, like, find who's in charge in the registration, we'll, we'll just say, oh, they're over at that booth. I don't know where they're at right now. And uh, if they're to have any kind of concept, maybe they'll read the thing and we'll have a little thing about police, you know, how they're the aggressors and they're the only reason that people are scared and asking permission all the time. Yeah, I think it's cool to have some kind of table with different information on it. So I, I created like a big map last year um, where you were able to take a sticky note and kind of just say, oh, this is where I'm at, this is what kind of services or products or event I'm hosting or whatever. So maybe we'll have that map there and if you have like a card or a flyer or any kind of information, you can leave it on on the table and we'll just make sure to include some cop lock information. Yeah, maybe we'll make it a community bulletin area as well, but... Oh, and I'll hang up my cop lock camera there. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's, um, that's good. And if uh, the police are coming and talking to anybody, we could, uh, we'll refer them to that and we'll, we'll kind of educate the police at the same time. So if any police do come to any of your booths and want to know who's in charge, um, just give them a little educational speech about being free. Yeah, there were some, you know, people or law enforcement up there last year that kind of came early and some of them would drive up there and like park by a tree and just sit in their car for a while, totally creepy, like just spying on people or doing whatever. And they did question some people asking why they're there. Are they here for the Jackalope Festival, you know, and it's just this invasive procedure that they have for people that are just out there camping is it's out of control and it's unnecessary and it has it's complete opposite of freedom so definitely record any interactions you have and uh yeah, if, you, if you don't really want to uh approach the police and talk to them like this say hey i just thought this was a popular campground no there's a festival going on here you, know, you can just Play with it a little bit. All right, we bring our family here every year at the same time yeah, to go camping. I don't know. What are you doing here? Why are you here? Are you here for this festival you're talking about? You know, whatever. Question yeah. them. See what how many kids the they whole, have. The whole concept of asking permission <laughs> to go camping is, is the stupidest thing in the world. But, like, the government created the forest and the mountains and right. the deserts. We but did. without their permission, we couldn't, like, exist there? No, the forest would not exist if the Forest Service Rangers did yeah. not exist. Which, if you look up why the Forest Service Rangers exist in the first place, it has to do with helping farmers decide water rights and things like that. Well, now they're there to monitor the forest and ask people questions. Uh, you know, what's next? Do you guys have your, you know, paperwork that allows you to be in the forest? I mean, come on. Do you think uh, the people like in the 1800s that came out west to Pioneer, do you think they asked permission to camp along the way? Or build homes or cities or... Or stay I mean, longer than two weeks? So, if the police do say, say stuff like that to them. Well, I'm definitely going to. So, uh, maybe we can educate them and turn them around and make them quit their jobs because it's an immoral position. Yeah, the, the Forest Service did come last year and... Uh, some of them were law enforcement that just kind of spied on people and maybe asked a few questions. Then the foresters came full battle rattle and uh, came up to my table and they knew who I was. Or when I said my name, which I shouldn't have said my name, I should have just said, Hi, I'm Spartacus, or Hi, I'm Anonymous, <laughs> or Hi, no name. Um, but, you know, habit of being polite. I said my name and they said, Oh, nice sight. And I'm pretty sure they were referring to the website, knowing who I am and, and things like that. But they they wanted to make sure that no one was going to drive ATVs in the meadow, which is blocked off by all these... Um, like stones and pillars. And pillars. Stuff. And they wanted to make sure that people were safe with guns, gun safety stuff. And then he goes, the one guy goes, and if more people show up, they can camp over here and they can camp over here. Like they needed their permission. <laughs> it's national forest. You can camp anywhere you want and it goes on for miles. I mean, Jackalope Festival can eventually evolve into some, you know, completely other, like, bigger thing where now there's a market over in this camping area of the forest and now there's a market over in this camping area of the forest or there's a big, you know dance party over here, or there's a big cooking event over here, or there's a nature whatever over here. It's it, whatever it wants to be, depending on what people bring to it and how it grows, and and all, you know, within not aggressing, without aggressing upon anybody else. Yeah, don't, don't assume that everyone attending is uh, 
a freedom-minded person because there are other people that don't understand the concept of being free. Uh, I remember a couple older people that were there, you know, arguing with me about taxes and, you know, the concept of, you know, voting and stuff like that. So, because there are local people from the local town. So if you do stop in at a local, you know, general store or gas station or whatever, talk to them, educate them about freedom because we want the whole area to change and changing the culture of Arizona. And especially up in the mountains where there's not a giant city and not as much propaganda pumped at them, that's probably possible. A lot of people go up to Sholo and Heber Overgard and Forest Lakes to be left alone. So if anything, they should understand the concept of this event or festival or non-event or whatever you want to call it. Um, they should understand more than anyone why they moved up there to begin with, including the Forest Service Rangers. I'm sure they live up in this area to be left alone because that's what you do when you want to be left alone. You go to a, a place that has less people. And you live in the forest, and, you know, you build your home, and you hopefully are left alone. You know, the thing is, even those shop owners and the sheriffs and forest rangers in the wilderness parts of Arizona, they break the law half the time, too, because they don't agree with it. But then they enforce it on everybody else. So what I like to do is point out the hypocrisies in their own philosophies and beliefs. Um, that, that's a way to really wake them up. I have a list of different agorist jobs that um, people might want to think about doing while they're there. So I'm going to go grab it. So a few different um, agorist idea business ideas while you're at Jackalope um, would be showers. That's something that obviously is not there. We built a shower last year, so we have one and we have a little water tank about this big. Yay big, and you can heat it with a propane on a grill, and it's got a hose with a shower nozzle, and you can adjust the um, how fast the water comes out, and we built a shower with a curtain, and it was awesome last year to have a shower at Jackalope, and that's one thing that's really, really nice amenity to have, so if you have the ability to build a shower, bring a shower, even a, you know, a black solar bag is nice to have. Uh, that's a that's a good agorist idea. Um, you can trade. Hey, you know, you can use my shower and. Uh, Let me get a corn dog. I get a corn dog yeah, or whatever. Uh, tents is another thing. Uh, people that are traveling from across the country or other countries um, coming might not have access to a tent. So that's something that you can um, you can bring if you have extra uh, generators and electricity is huge. If you have an extra generator, bring it. People will want to charge their phones uh, and any anything else that needs power. You know, like a solar battery charger or something. People, I know some people have that. You can get cell service out there. Uh, it's kind of spotty, but you can pick it up. And if you have a hotspot, you might want to offer that to people because it definitely helps if you're trying to do anything on the internet. Um, Oh, I forgot to mention we're going to have ice cream this year. Hopefully. we got to get on that. <laughs> we're going to have ice cream. Maybe uh, kids can go around and clean people's campsites, teaching them the whole idea of uh, earning money and entrepreneurial ideas. Maybe stacking firewood for people. Uh, I noticed some kids were doing that last year. Um, also, water is a big resource to have if you have extra water. Um, if you have a way to bring extra water, it's a good idea. It's something you can never have more of. Um, and ice. Ice is another thing. If you have a way to get a bunch of ice up there, you're definitely going to sell ice because people run out and they have to drive seven and a half miles to the convenience store, which is a big supporter of Jackalope, by the way, and they hang signs every year for us. Um, and you have to get ice there. But if you have a way to bring ice in and keep it cold, you'll sell ice. I would pay extra, so I wouldn't have to drive all the way into town. And another idea is a taxi service. Whether you're driving from Phoenix to Forest Lakes or you're driving from somewhere else, uh, you're driving across the country, if you offer uh, service and you caravan or you carpool or whatever, um, picking people up from the airport and bringing them in, you can do that as well. And driving people into town, you know, like a carpool into town to get stuff because maybe some people want to party a little bit. Maybe a designated driver into town. You ran out of beer. Yeah. You need a ride. You're drunk. Get a ride <laughs> from the taxi agorist driver. Agorist taxi driver. Um, 
And then the last couple things we thought of were maybe like a sprinkler pool pad for the kids. I don't know if you're going to do that. We talked about uh, it. I'm not really sure. I think I got a lot going on already. So. But it's a lot of work. Um, but there are ways to, you know, have electricity, bring a pump in, make a little sprinkler pad for the kids, do whatever you I want. I heard someone talking about they were going to do a paintball thing up there. Uh, I don't remember who that was. There were some people that mentioned it, and I contacted someone here locally recently and told them about the festival, and I don't know if they're going to show yeah. up or what. Um, and then one last thing is popsicles. It's warm, it's not hot, but it might be nice to have a popsicle. So if you have a way to make popsicles and keep them cold and sell them, do it. The only thing I, I would like to see someone do is a, like an actual coffee stand, not just like coffee over the campfire, but... We like, will have coffee. Espressos and well, I'm not gonna um, bring lattes this. and all that kind of stuff. That would be kind of cool. Yes. I, lattes I, I and will espressos. will trade rabbit and quail and meals for that any day. Bring it. So if you build it, they will come. Definitely. Anyway, thanks for, uh, for watching. See ya.